Jason Perkins, um, head brewer here at Allagash. And uh, you're here today to witness some, uh, an epic event here where we'll be brewing uh, the first Lambic uh, traditionally brewed uh, with the use of spontaneous fermentation and a cool ship uh, for the first time, as far as we know it, uh, in the U.S. Uh, so it should be an exciting day. Let's we'll see how it goes. We're going to start the process by mashing in. Um, Lambics traditionally are brewed with a high portion of raw wheat malt, which we will be doing today. Um, that in combination with uh, Belgian Pilsner malt as well. A lot of the stuff we're going to do today is uh, really goes against most modern brewing techniques. Um, but we're making a much different work today than 99.9% .9 of the breweries in the world make. We're making a work to sustain um, a very long fermentation and a fermentation done by a series of organisms that most breweries want nothing to do with. So, all right, we're going to start adding some water in there to start. So really trying to, to extract as much of the tannins uh, and proteins out of the malt as you can. Whereas normally we try to avoid that. All right, Rob, let's do it. Yeah. Rob's going to turn on the, the grain auger over there and start sending in some of this malt. Like Rob said, we're going to be learning as we go a little bit on this. This is a pretty thick mash, um, much thicker than anything we normally do here. Probably somewhere in the vicinity of four or five times thicker than we normally are. I mean, we take an average of several spots here, um, and we're looking at probably about 118 degrees. Um, so like I said, it's a touch hotter than I was shooting for, but still within the range. So we're going to go we'll rest 15 minutes um, till about 7.05, where we'll do our first water addition. And then we're going to just check the pH of this mash here. How many gallons of water are you going to add? We're going to add about 100 gallons here. Uh, total water, uh, actually, our target's going to be about 450 gallons of total water. Another, another rest, and then we'll do another pretty substantial addition. Give us time to have breakfast. What we're moving to do now is we're going to take a portion of this malt, uh, or this mash in here, and pump it over into our kettle where we'll heat it up to boiling. So Rob, we want to run it up to a little bit of like an inch above that probe. Okay, you got a long way to go. Okay. Yeah, I can hear the, the pump is struggling with it. So we're going to boil for about 10 minutes and then pump it back. Um, but we uh, worked with the folks at Hop Union and, and they had some hops that they actually had been aging um, in their reserves. Uh, just, Kind of a stroke of luck, to be honest, because you know, as you know, probably we're not even looking for alphas out of them. We're looking for pretty much strictly preservative quality only. It's it's uh, honestly one of those things we're going to need to continue to do some research with. The folks at Cantiana have been helpful so far, so we'll probably get some info, insight from them on how to age hops, because you know it's just not something we've done before. They'd probably eventually all get in there on their own. Now we wait. It's about a four hour boil, so now it's pretty much a waiting game at this point. And we'll start graining this stuff out here, which we do by reversing the augers and or the rakes and start pumping it out. Probably going to leave a lot of the hops behind here in the, in the, kettle, in the kettle. Can you edit out the face yeah. that I'm going to make when I do this? Yeah, uh, we'll get it. We'll get it. 
Get it on Joel, don't worry. We'll see you on the way. Go. It's almost done with the transfer, so I'm gonna head back in and, and uh, get ready to shut this off. We're not doing a blueberry lambic though, that much, that much we know. <laughs> we get that in there for good measure.